Good morning. Good morning, Q campers. How's it going? So welcome, welcome to our first event other than breakfast, or last night's reception of, of Q 2017. I'm David Linscombe, ETC's Vice President of Marketing, and I'm glad that you guys are all here. And I also uh, um, welcome everyone who's attending online. We're live streaming this event, and we're live streaming a number of events through the week, and you can find those at etcconnect.com forward slash Q. Uh, we encourage you to uh, attend events offline if you can't be here. Now, if you're not here, what you need to understand is that the theme of Q this year is camp, summer camp. So if you hear odd references to summer camp and you're, uh, it's out of context, you might have no clue what we're doing. But everyone here knows what we're doing, right? We're singing songs and having schmores and sleeping in tents. And <laughs> it's exactly the experience that all these people have been waiting for. It's, a, it's like a theater. It's like nerd theater camp, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. And I know you all wanted that as youngsters and couldn't quite get to what you needed. So, welcome. I also know most of you are expecting to see Fred Foster here this morning. And uh, let me just tell you, the week, the week before Fred does a keynote is a very exciting week at ETC. <laughs> it's like 60 days ago, I'm like, you know, you're doing the keynote. Have you thought about what you're going to talk about? And he's like, that's like in two months, you know? I don't... I don't want to think about that. I'm like, well, we have some new products. Maybe you could show some new products to the, the Q campers. And he's like, I don't think so. I got something else in mind. Oh, what do you have in mind? It's not forthcoming. So uh, what everyone at ETC, all these people around the outside at ETC know is that the, the, in about the three days before the keynote, a lot of chaos ensues <laughs> with uh, Fred making big plans and sometimes making videos. And occasionally, we've had limousines driven into town square and uh, things like that. In, the, uh, in all the fun that he was having, and that chaos did begin on Monday, um, <laughs> but he started developing a sore throat and a cough, and by yesterday he said he was unable to do the speech, so uh, we have a thing at ETC we call getting fretted, okay? <laughs> Maybe you guys have equivalent kinds of things in your life. And so yesterday at 2 o'clock when he said, you're going to have to do the speech, it was the ultimate fretting. So. <laughs> I know that he's watching online, and we send you wishes for your best recovery, Fred, and we'll go without you. So um, I mentioned that one of the things we enjoy doing at Q is giving all these people who have traveled literally from around the world um, a chance to see sneak previews of some products that we have upcoming that are unreleased, because that's what everybody's always interested in. And uh, I had planned to do that today. Fred had planned to do that today, even after he said, no, I don't think I'll show, show products this week when the chaos began, he said, I think I will show products. And I had to say, the products aren't ready. We can't show them. Well, why not? Well, the product managers, the overlays, the colors, the screens, there's, things aren't working. I'm sorry, a lot changed in 60 days and the products are not ready. So, oh, hey, hey, Camp Counselor. You guys recognize Camp Counselor David Hilton from the welcome video, right? Idaho campers. <laughs> what, are you do what are you doing here, David? Well, I'm bringing out the products you asked me to bring out. Oh. <laughs> We're going to let the badger out of the bag on this one. <laughs> so much to the chagrin of the product managers in the room, we want to give you a sneak preview of some products anyway. And we apologize they aren't more ready for you to see. You'll just have to wait. So get your moment in right now. We were going to be revealing to you a couple of brand new ION consoles that we expect to be shipping in about six, six or so weeks. Of course, we weren't able to reveal those ION consoles because not everything was quite ready. So I'm afraid these are not the droids you're looking for. Okay. And then we were going to reveal a brand new uh, LED fixture, a color source psych light. We were looking forward to showing you that and having it set up all over the building. <laughs> Unfortunately, the brand new psych light we were going to reveal isn't quite ready, and so we're not able to show it to you yet. <laughs> well, thank you. So uh, y'all have a good rest of the time here, and I have to say, 
Be safe around open fires this weekend and absolutely no more than one person on the zip line at a time. Have a good week, y'all. <laughs>
And, uh, and Fred and Jimmy were like, you know, we got to do this. We got we, we to gotta make a little more money. We can't keep doing this. Um, so in a sense, you could say that a, what is a company's strategy? A company's strategy is a means by which they will gain some advantage. You know, when you look at your company, you say, How, what's our edge? What do we do that's different from other companies? And that's kind of what your strategy is. Well, at the time, you can imagine Fred and Jimmy, you know, they hadn't been trained in strategic negotiations or probably didn't have an extraordinary company strategy in 1979. They were just doing the best they could to make these light boards. Um, but they had no edge in this negotiation with evil. I mean, with, <laughs> with, uh, with their major customer. No evil. Um, so at some point, the negotiations became difficult, and the strategy that emerged from Jimmy and Fred was, you know, I don't know if we want to keep doing this. We'd really rather be sailing. You know, we, I don't know if we can just keep this up. So their strategy was, ah, maybe we just don't want to make these light boards anymore and send them to you. And that was the way they were able to get this negotiation to happen. At some point, they went back to Wisconsin. <laughs> and they made these pins. So this was like the first DTC swag, you know. Electronic theater controls, we'd rather be sailing. And I think the story is that they sent boxes of these to Colortran, just like, you know, without a return address or anything. Just they arrived, and they ended up people using them all over the building. It was, it was a reminder, it was a reminder of ETC's strategy. We'd rather be sailing. Um, so this, you know, in a way, uh, they had a logo that was a little bit of a sail. They had a, a tagline, we'd rather be sailing. Um, then in around 1980, According to Fred, they changed their logo to this star. And I like this line. Actually, Fred wrote it. There is no good story here. It was a design that he did in an art class. <laughs> and they claimed, they claimed that it was a spotlight. So, <laughs> of course, um, everyone bought into that. It was a great logo. And uh, it looks something like a spotlight, right? So that was around 1980. What were you doing in 1980? You don't, okay, wasn't born yet, there you go, watching the Olympic. Um, so at some point in the mid-80s, somebody got a hold of the Illustrator program, and they started creating, you know, we had, we had kind of Logo Central. Uh, John Hainsworth probably created this digital logo in Illustrator. Uh, and then, I don't know if you saw the dual logo, you guys remember the ETC LMI dual logo for a while? Is anyone old enough to remember that in 1990? ETC and LMI merged, and there was the, the dual logo. Um, but this, what we call the energy field here, right, this section of the logo, we fondly call that the energy field. Our graphic designers became less fond of it over time. Um, but the energy field remained the same, really, for about, you know, 30 years. Um, and all that time, what was interesting was ETC didn't remain the same at all. ETC was growing and changing in many, many, many ways, you know. Uh, at that time, they were basically making lighting control consoles. That was their only product. Uh, over time, they joined with LMI. They started making dimming and power distribution, and eventually it was architectural control and then networking and rigging systems. So the company was changing, but the logo wasn't really changing. Um, about, let's see, two cues ago, we measure time at ETC by Q, so <laughs> two cues ago, or three cues ago. It was three cues ago. Now we get into that thing where mom and dad argue about how many, how many years ago that happened. You guys have all been there. It was three cues ago that uh, Wendy Orphan joined our company. She was our, she's our marketing communications manager. And she started saying, hey, have you guys, we thought about updating the logo. It kind of, you know, gently she was saying, maybe it looks a little dated. Uh, ETC's changed so much. The logo hasn't really changed. It's kind of hard to work with graphically. Maybe we should update the logo. It sends a message that the company is changing. And a lot of people at ETC were really against this. <laughs> Fred was the most vocal. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I don't want to change the logo. I've changed logos before. It's too hard. You know, you have to change all the boxes, the swag, um, things like that. And so uh, for a long time, Wendy was on the, you know, every year, should we think about the logo this year? Let's do a little project. Let's change the logo. And uh, no, let's not do that this year. Um, 
But eventually, uh, uh, let's see, when was it? About 2015, uh, Fred said, so that was you know, one cue ago. Um, <laughs> Fred said, you know, maybe it is time to change the logo. We should. I mean, we're, we were working on a new strategy. We had implemented a new strategy in 2013. We were changing the company around. And the winds of change were really blowing at ETC, and they blew hard enough that Fred decided changing the logo was a good idea. You can imagine that Wendy did not waste much time um, getting a team together to work on this. And um, they worked for over a year <laughs> on uh, a new logo that better reflected who we had become as a company. And we ended up you know, with business cards that look like this with our new logo. And a new tagline, Visual Environment Technologies. And uh, the, the evolution of this tagline was that our old business cards said all the things that we did on it, right? It said dimming and rigging. And, and then over, actually in the process of doing the new business cards, it was like, we can't put everything on there. We need to find something that we can gather ETC's technologies and services under. And it became visual environment technologies. So that's probably, you know, more than you want to know about the way we went about changing a logo. Um, but there's a moral to the story. I, I'm, I'm getting to it. So why does a logo need to change? That's, that's what we could ask ourselves. And more importantly, what does this mean to Camp Q? Right? I know that's what you're all thinking. Uh, so the, the evolution of a logo does help to cue you off. And maybe in some ways it helps externally in the way people perceive a company. But it also helps internally, as I think what we found, that it also sends a message to the employees of the company that the company is changing. And you know this, but you're just kind of going along through your days, doing your thing. And you know, it's like we rolled out a new logo, and everyone's like, yeah, we have a new logo. We're really changing. And that had been happening all along, but it, it helps to like spell a moment in time where you talk about change. So uh, as a company, we're evolving, right? Just like you and the way you do your productions or the way you produce your art or light your architecture, um, like the visual environment around us is changing through the way the internet has changed, the way we perceive things in our visual environment, uh, the way media has infiltrated theater production, all kinds of visual production. So we, in, you know, admittedly, we invented this term, visual environment technologies. And that's what we're focused on today as a company. So it's not really about the logo. It's about helping to focus what you want to do as a company. And if you think that redesigning a logo, or if I tell you that redesigning a logo is tough, I would say the only thing tougher is like defining a corporate strategy. Maybe you've been involved in this. And even if you work for a theater or a, even a nonprofit or an education institution, you know, there's that dreaded time when you say, we're going to sit down and define our new strategy. And there's like some excitement. And then when you start trying to do it, it's like, ah, oh, this is like pulling teeth, you know. Defining strategy is really, really difficult. So our strategy at ETC um, is changed through the years. But, you know, lately we've been looking at how can we keep up with you, our customers, and the way that you would like to shape and create your visual environments, whether they're in architecture or in art or in theater production or concert production? How can we be sure that we're giving you the tools that you need to do the latest and greatest things or to enhance the message that you're trying to deliver? That's really what we're after. We find as a company that we're at our very best when we keep focused on what the customers need. When we focus too much on ourselves, you know, things can get off kilter. So I'll, I'll give you a little clue of kind of how that's come along here in our recent past. Um, you know, there was a, a, a global downturn in business. There was the financial crisis of 2008, 2009. There was a recession. And we saw the lighting business and all of our entertainment businesses contract a little bit. And what do you do as a company? Well, you react. You say, hey, what's the most important thing to us? We knew that what was important to us was we wanted to keep being able to serve the customer, and we also wanted to make sure we could keep our employees. The lifeblood of ETC is our employees. And, and if you haven't had a relationship with us, or if Q is, is one of your first experiences of that, I think you're going to find over the next few days that the employees that you're going to meet, people who are going to be teaching your classes, leading your camp songs, you know, helping you make your s'mores, 
um, are really what the company is all about. So in, in 2008, 2009, while we were kind of dealing with a downturn in business, we, uh, we used this term, we circled the wagons, right? So it's kind of a U.S. prairie term. We circled the wagons. We wanted to protect uh, ETC in the form of our customers, in the form of our employees. And that went on through, you know, 2011, 2012. But the other thing we discovered during that time, or we decided during that time, was we are going to keep investing in R&D. We're going to keep investing in new products. LEDs were starting to become more prevalent. We actually got into the LED business about 2009. Um, people were adopting LEDs in our core theater markets. You know, they'd already been doing it in the, the club market and to some degree the concert market. The power of the LED emitter was getting to the point where you could start to harness it for more of the work that many of you are doing in, in, in live theater, where you have longer throw distances and you need more light output. Um, so we did. We invested and uh, we focused on R&D, and what our goal was was to come out of the economic downturn with a company that had a lot to offer its customers so that when people were able to spend money again, we would have the products that they wanted. And at 2013, or around 2012-2013, we, uh, as a management group, we were sitting down saying, okay, I think it's time for a change. You know, we're seeing the economy begin to recover. Uh, in 2012, we introduced uh, Source for LED. Some of you guys bought Source for LED Series 1, maybe, in 2012, right? Uh, we were amazed at how that product took off. The Series 1 was just incredibly successful, and we started to see, <laughs> we started to say, hey, maybe this LED thing's really going to last, you know? <laughs> it's not just a passing fad. Um, and fortunately, you know, in that time from 2009 on, we had been investing in LED technology, and we were learning how to do it better. And uh, in 2013, we decided that we would focus on growth. We had been a little bit in a stationary mode. Even though our revenue had grown, um, we hadn't really done a lot to say, let's make a decision to grow. And uh, oftentimes, we tell the story of saying, um, we decided to focus on growth. And we had a company meeting, and Fred, Fred sat on top of a touring rack and told all the employees, we're going to change our strategy. We're going to focus on growth. And boy, did a lot of things happen. It's like you have a motivated employee base and you tell them it's time to focus on growth and it, it just came out of the woodwork. It's like the next few years actually tired us out from focusing on growth. Um, you know, some of the things that we did are up here. We bought a new building in, in Mesomania, a giant facility. How many of you guys toured the facility in Mesomania at the pre-show? Great, awesome place, huh? It's a small little town. Uh, you know, just west of, of our Middleton location, and, and uh, we were pleased to be able to get a great facility there and build it. And that greatly expanded our capacity to produce product. And another thing it did was greatly expanded our capacity to produce rigging product. We had gotten into rigging um, prior to that, and rigging was really an area we were seeing grow. And then most of you guys know we, we bought the uh, Vortec division, rigging division from Dactronics during this period of growth. Uh, we got into building high-capacity Hoist. Did you guys see that at, at Mesomany, right? We're, so we're building the regular theatrical hoist, and then we're also building hoists that hold up like the big scoreboards in the middle of sports arenas and things like that. So thousands and thousands and, and uh, tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of pounds capacity. And we were able to do a lot of that because we had planned for growth. We had this new building. So we were expanding our LED technology. LED power was getting better. In 2014, we introduced the Source 4 Series 2. You guys have Series 2? Anybody have Series 2 LEDs? That's great. You know, it's a great product. Um, and, and I have to say, in, in 2014 or 2015, probably after introducing that, lighting designers started saying to us, you know, I think I, think I can start to envision a world without tungsten. Um, this, is, this is a sad thing to us at ETC. <laughs> As you guys know, we've typically had, you know, a big investment in tungsten technology. I mean, Source 4 uh, ellipsoidals in, in uh, 1992, 93 really changed the way people were able to use tungsten lighting. We have a lot of investment in dimming technology. Uh, and when we introduced Series 2 and people said, oh, I can start to see the end of, of tungsten, we're like, uh-oh. We got to keep getting to work here. So we did. We invested more money in power technology that would power 
LEDs because the power infrastructure in, in theaters and in all performance spaces is going to change as a result of, of uh, not needing dimmers anymore, quite frankly. And I think we've, we've done a good job of, of crossing that divide. So this term, crossing the LED divide, was a, a kind of a term that we started talking about in product management during this period of time. Um, I was looking for the moment in time when we were shipping more LED quantity of product than we were shipping tungsten quantity of product. And it was like, when's that going to happen? When's that going to happen? And in 2015, uh, we shipped about 99,000 tungsten fixtures at ETC. And then at the same year, we shipped about 70,000 LED fixtures out of ETC. So I'm like, it's coming. It's getting close. And then in 2016, I just looked at these numbers last night. It's like I forgot about this thing. And just looked at these numbers last night and said, ah, it, it happened. In 2016, we shipped 85,000 tungsten fixtures and 95,000 LED fixtures. Um, so this is a, a big change. It's a big change for you. How many of you are using LED in your daily lighting work? Yeah, that's easily two-thirds of the audience. So, And those numbers are obviously uh, supported here. So as, as ETC and you know, other companies like us in our industry, it's been a major part of our thinking of how to cross that divide and how to make sure that we were still able to provide you the systems that you need to be able to work with LED in a way that increases what you can do with lighting rather than taking a step back. Ultimately, lighting systems are our main product, even though we like to focus on the new ion console, which you don't really know about. Um, <laughs> And, you know, new psych lights or new, or new profile fixtures, the system is what's most important to you in your daily work. How that all works together. Uh, so the other big thing that happened in 2015 was employee ownership. And uh, this is really exciting for us at ETC. Uh, Fred decided that he wanted the employees in this period of growth, there was so much change going on, he wanted the employees to have a bigger stake in the future of the company. And so we are in the process of becoming employee-owned over a period of time. Um, and so, as I said last night, all the ETC employees, for some reason they don't use the seats, they gather around the edges. Um, the ETC employees that you're working with this week are actually in the process of becoming owners of the company. So we're real proud of that. It's very cool. So then, here we are. We're, we're crossing the LED divide in 2016 the dreaded strategy realignment meetings. You know. Okay, we've come over this divide. Actually, we didn't know at the time that we'd actually crossed the divide because I forgot to check the numbers. Uh, <laughs> but there was a sense in the company that a lot of change had happened. All of these things had happened. Um, our manufacturing capacity had changed a lot. And, uh, and what do you know? We even managed to change our logo. And uh, that forced us to kind of, during all of that happening, we started to look at what is the next frontier for ETC? Where do we go from here? And in this strategy realignment, we decided to focus more on technologies than on individual products. So when you're, when you're gearing up a, a company to grow, there's naturally a focus on product because product fuels growth, fuels sales growth. It puts more things out, more tools out for, for you guys as artists into the market. And uh, in some ways, I would say, you know, from 2013 to 2016, I mean, uh, we, the, putting out a lot of products has actually tired us out. We're like, oh, no, another new product, you know. Uh, and it's a good problem to have. But we focus now on technologies that we think are going to be really important to you people as artists in the future. Uh, one of those is LED color and quality of light. It's one of our major concerns at getting into LED and actually a reason that ETC waited maybe longer than the average company to get into LED was we were not happy with the quality of light that we could get from kind of existing LED technology around 2007, 2008, during that time period. And we were fortunate to meet uh, Robin Novella of Celador, who were working with the polychromatic or the multicolored LED technology that's now become kind of a key aspect of our product line. And we were really fortunate to uh, find those guys or have, and have them find us so that we could really build on that. Uh, 
As you guys know, using multiple colors in our LEDs is important because of quality of light. And if you're using Series 2, and I know a lot of you are, you probably have begun to recognize the difference in that. We've been doing more uh, technology research into how our eyes perceive LED color, what LED mixes are the best. And have some of you gotten, have any of you gotten a chance to participate in our research, our research that we're doing? A number of people. So a lot of people who have not. Um, there's an opportunity for you this week to participate in a research project where we show you a lot of images on a, a really nice screen. And you get to pick well, which one looks best to you, which one feels a certain way to you. So it's kind of a fun, subjective way to look at how you respond to color and light and what that means to you. That's one of the important technologies we're working on in the future because we want to bring the highest quality of light that we can to you guys as, as lighting artists. Um, Moving LED up market and down market is another one. You know, uh, what's the biggest complaint about LED technology? Too expensive, right? It costs a lot. So if you're going to spend four or five times the amount of money that you would on a tungsten fixture, you get color out of that, and that's kind of the killer app these days. But it definitely puts a change into the way you have money to spend, and we recognize that. So we've worked on products like our color source line, which, you know, we have this new addition coming for that line, uh, so that we could bring LED technology in a more affordable way but still preserve high quality light into a format that more people could afford. At the same time, through our color technology, in the future we hope to bring to market um, color technologies, LED technologies that actually even produce a higher quality of light for applications where it's needed. And then another one was automated lighting. So you may have noticed we're interested in automated lighting. Uh, we're very happy earlier this year to have, have come together with High End Systems, a company that we have known for a long time and have had kind of a, a, a kinship with for a long time. Um, it's interesting to know that prior to our acquisition of High End Systems and even prior to us considering an acquisition of High End Systems, we had already started a moving light project at ETC. And you may have seen on social media we, uh, we took a very different way of doing this. Like usually we would keep this all top secret and say, let's, let's find people that we can hire and not tell anyone what we're doing. And then we decided, hey, you know, everything's out in the open these days anyway. Why don't we just tell everybody? We're going to get into moving lights. If you want to work with us on moving lights, apply for a job. And so we literally got hundreds and hundreds of applications from people who were, who were applying for nonspecific jobs in, in working on moving lights with uh, ETC. And it was really interesting to, uh, to see where all those people came from and the backgrounds they came from. So we did start a project working on automated lighting at ETC. And I'm not going to tell you much more about that because it's still intact. And we still are working on some ETC branded automated lighting fixtures. Um, but at the same time, High End Systems uh, presented us with an opportunity to expand the way we worked with automated lighting. How many of you are familiar with the High End product line? Right? Okay. So about half the audience. That's good because if you're not at our product showcase area, we have representatives from high end who are here and we have product from high end here is for you to get a chance to look at their line of all LED, very high powered moving lights. And of course, the, the famous uh, hog console line, which we're really proud to have become a part of ETC. Um, one of the great things about bringing high end in, and this has just been since April, um, this has also kept us really busy. A lot of great people have joined the company in that time. A lot of people with a deep, long experience in the automated lighting industry. So I can safely say that automated lighting is something that you'll be seeing a lot more from with ETC in the future. Um, you may also know that High End was a pioneer in digital lighting, which is this kind of what we would all say for a long time has been this coming intersection of media um, projection media and lighting, right? We all see this coming, but it's like, when is it going to happen? Uh, because those, those sources that are being used for projectors, like high power projectors that we have here, are capable of also maybe being a light fixture. High end's a leader in that market, and we plan to continue work in that market. We also know that, that media, whether it's projected or whether it's coming from a surface, is important to you as lighting artists, and that's an area where we'll be putting a technology focus over coming years. And then another, another important thing that we've been looking at at ETC is 
kind of the another intersection of rigging, lighting, and media. Now, if you know anybody who's seen a Cirque show for the last ten years has seen, you know, rigging, uh, movement, lighting, and media all coming together. If you watch the Eurovision Song Contest, things like that, you get to see this. Uh, at ETC, we we always are looking for when can we help technologies like that come more into the mainstream? When can we make that accessible to your average university theater, regional theaters, smaller houses? And we'll definitely be putting research in the near future, and we are in these coming in the coming years into helping you do more of your rigging combined with media and combined with lighting. So. I think you have a lot to expect from us. You know, we feel like our future is really bright. Um, we appreciate what you guys do for us as customers, the way you push us. And as I said, really, our strategy at ETC is to try and keep up with you. We want to be able to deliver to you the tools that are right for any moment that you want to create in terms of a visual environment. Um, so. The moral of the story is, <laughs> you really should update your logo periodically. Right? It's, you know, it's a little bit reversing the process, but actually I would say the last uh, couple of years looking at the ETC logo has been a nice opportunity for us to look at how we've changed and plan the change that you guys will all see and experience in the future. So that's who we are, ETC, Visual Environment Solutions. Um, we thank you all for coming. We thank you for joining us online. So everyone who's here for Camp Q, you guys are going to have a, um, a rest period now. Okay? We have pallets for you to nap on outside, and there'll be milk, <laughs> milk brought around, and the camp nurse is here to see if, you know, if anything's happened overnight. Um, you have a little bit of time before your first classes begin. We hope you guys have a great visit here. And um, I'll hang around if you want to ask me questions or look for us during the week. Don't forget, Camp Counselor David Hilton needs to be forced into wearing that costume the whole time. Thank you.